Good afternoon, thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Hill and Class. I'm always glad to come to Hill and Class because Jesus always comes to Hill and Class. Yes, he's always with us. He's always in Hill and Class, mm -hmm. waiting to heal us. Um, we've been working on a series for weeks. Um, Believe the words of Jesus, we titled it. And we picked that up from um, John, the fourth chapter, with the, the nobleman's son. Jesus told him uh, his son lives. Mm -hmm. And he went home and he was living. Right. Praise God. Now, Amen. we're been on this, what? 11 to 12 weeks, mm -hmm. and we're just halfway through the 19 healings and the four books that records the Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. And you know, what we have found out that the determining factor in most of the healings when people talk with Jesus was their faith, right? And you know, a few of them, you know, he just worked a miracle. But anytime a person is healed, it is a miracle for them, right? That's right. And it, we saw last week that um, the Cyphelician daughter got the devil cast out of her by Jesus. <laughs> He, you know, because she had great faith. She had faith, and she didn't care if he was, she was insulted. She was humble. She was big. And, right. And, um, and, you know, following right along with that, and uh, this particular uh, healing here is Jesus heals a deaf mute. Oh, yeah. That's only found in Mark, the seventh chapter. But it's... Um, a few verses, but it's loaded with information. Because, um, you know, just like we're, I think this is about the 10th or 11th hill and we looked at, and as we've been going through them, we see that people are more ready to believe. Right, they heard it. You know, They've when he it first started his ministry, people, you know, didn't want to believe. Well, they were saying, isn't he just uh, the carpenter's son? Yeah, that's what they told him in his hometown. But he's, you know, if you look at the the record, the record in Luke, he, he said, the uh, spirit of the Lord is upon me right. because he has anointed me. Right. He, he told them all that, and they mm -hmm. still didn't want to hear it. No, they didn't. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's just like, you know, with our ministry, we have to keep going regardless of what anybody says, yeah. you know, yeah. of, you know, how they look at you or, you know, you know, where you work at or where you used to work at or what you used to do, right. you know, um, people, you know, they got a picture of you in their mind. Right. And that's, that's what they, and that's the picture that they have. Right. But see, we're not over here to take the glory for ourselves. We've given all the glory to God, God the Father, because glory don't nothing happen unless God wants it to happen in your life. Mm -hmm. And that goes right along with a lot of people say, well, everything that happens is the will of God. Not necessarily. Because all this stealing, killing, and destroying down here is not the will of God. God is a good God. Right? Right, he blesses you when you in his will, when you willingly do what he wants you to do. And you know, they like to follow that up, well, well God is in control. No, well, he is not. Well, ultimately he is in control and his will is going to be done here on earth. But the, the question is, will you be a part of it? Is right. he in control of your life? Have you made a choice to make Jesus your Lord and Savior? That's how, you know, God has got all this set up. So let us pray because, you know, we are going to go over a few things here tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, just thanking you for everything that you have done for us. We praise you. 
for your holiness and for your goodness and for your mercy and for your love. We ask that you will forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will lead us by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Through your word here tonight, that everything that I have studied and went over, that you will bring it out the way that you want it brought out. And lead and guide me so that you can get all the glory, all the praise. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Uh, Luke, the seventh chapter, this starts around the 31st verse, not Luke, See? Mark. Mark, right, that's where I am, Mark. Mark, the seventh chapter, starts around the 31st verse. Drink a little water so my throat won't be all dry. Okay, starting at verse 31, it says, soon after this, well, let me read it out over here. I'm going to read out of King James. It said, And again, departing from the coast of Tower and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hands upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighs, he sees and said unto him, Ephaba, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were open and the strain of his tongue was loose and he spake plainly. And he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, the more, the much more, and a great deal they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. It reads a little different out of the Amplified, but not too much different. Did you want to read out Amplified? That's a little clearer. It says, so after this, Jesus left the region of Tyre and passed through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, through the region of the Capitals, the ten Hellistic cities. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had difficulty speaking. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. So they begged him. Because mm -hmm. he couldn't say nothing. You know, his speech wasn't You know, clear. somebody was uh, interceding for him. Right. He could see them. Jesus taking him aside by himself away from the crowd so they couldn't see him put his finger into the man's ear, and after spitting, mm -hmm. he touched the man's tongue with saliva. So he spit and put his saliva in the man's tongue. Mm -hmm. And looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said to the man, Ephatha, which is in Arabic means, be open and release. When his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he began to speak plainly. And Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. Mm -hmm. They were thoroughly astonished mm -hmm. and completely overwhelmed, saying he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf here in a mute speak. Now, what we believe in, why we teach on healing, we believe in healing. Mm -hmm. That Jesus can heal you of anything. Mm -hmm. That's coronavirus, since that seems to be the big topic of the day, whether to take a vaccine or whether to wear a mask or whatever. But Jesus can heal you. If you come to him, right? Right. 
And I know he if can. You, if you believe and have faith in him, he can. Well, see, that's the, the main to factor faith in getting in healed. You yeah. have to believe that it is God's will for you to be healed. Right. If you are, uh, you know, living a life that you're saying, well, you know, I don't know if God, it's God's will for me to be healed, it, you can't get healed. And plus, if you're uh, saying, uh, you know, if you, like if you ask us to pray for you and for, for your healing, and you don't believe in healing, how do you know if you're going to get healed or not? Right. And a lot of people say, well, I, if I get healed, I, I know it was his will. If I don't get healed, I, it isn't his will. Right. That's and that's no saying. way to come to God. No, you got to come to God to believing faith, that faith, it man. is his will for you to be healed and have faith that, you know, you will be healed. And this is why so many people... You know, they like to play games with God and, you know, pretending that they have faith and that they really don't. No. They, you know, as soon as they get their healing, they're ready to go back into whatever they were doing. Right. They just come to church, you know, for somebody to pray for them, to get, you know, to get healed. And if they get healed, then they go right back to doing exactly what they were doing. Maybe whatever made them sick in the first place. It could be. And that's why when you... You want to have faith and belief in Jesus Christ when you get healed, so you'll take on a new life. You'll change your life. Mm -hmm. You're not going to walk the same way and talk the same way because you have Christ in you. Well, what we do, we usually read the, the passage, and then we go back and look at it verse by verse, yeah. and, you know, and get all the, the meat out of it, mm -hmm. you know, to give you something that you want. Now, we're not here for any kind of entertainment. No. We're here to bring the word of God to you so that you can have faith to be healed. This is healing class. Right. And a lot of people, you know, in order for God to heal you, you have to have faith in God that it is your will for you to be healed. It is his will for you to be healed. And plus, you have to, um, what am I trying to say here? With your, I lost my thought. With it, not only that, you, you had to open your, your heart up to the Lord. Because he can see in any way. So when you come to him, you got to be humble. Oh, yeah, you have to do that. You have to be humbled uh, to receive him. Because you can't go there thinking that, that he owed you something. Well, what I'm trying to say is uh -huh. you have to know that it is his will for you to be healed. Right. And plus you have to have faith that if somebody prays for you or if somebody lays hands on you that you will be healed. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, anoint you with oral or whatever they do. But it's not the person that's no, healing you. Right. It's God that's healing you. God gets all the glory. We're just Amen. vessels for him to use. He transmits the power through us, and, and you receive it. And when you receive it, that's when you get healed. But if you resist it, you won't get healed. A lot of people, you can lay hands on them, and they, ooh, what was that? That's the power of God. Mm -hmm. You know? So there is a lot. This is why we've been working on this series here, these uh, 19 healings, and then doing a thorough examination on them. Because what we do have been finding out that each one of these healings were a little different. They were with different people. Some of them were with women. Some of them were with, you know, somebody's child, you know, and different things. Like this one is with a man. And... Um, we see here in verse 31, it says, Soon after this, Jesus left the region of Tyre and passed through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of Decapolis, the ten Hellenistic cities. Now, if you go back with me to uh, Matthew, the 15th chapter, this is a reference for reference verse that goes with this. Amen. 
15, verse 15, I mean, chapter 15, verse 29. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'm getting excited here. Get done, brother. Amen. It says here in the 15th chapter of Matthew, the 29th verse. Jesus went along from there and passed along by the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on the hillside and was sitting there. And a great crowd came to him, bringing with them the lame, the crippled, the blind, the mute, and many others. And they put them down at his feet and he healed them. So the crowd was amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled restore, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they praised and glorified the God of Israel. So, everybody who comes to Jesus gets healed. There's nowhere in, that I can find in these um, four Gospels that people that came to Jesus, they didn't get healed. No, they got healed. When they everybody mm -hmm. that came to Jesus, they got healed. So you can't be, you know, saying to yourself, well, it may not be his will for me to be healed. And, you know, once the last apostle died, all that mm -hmm. healing stuff, you know, has passed away, and now we got the doctors. Now, I don't have nothing against doctors, but doctors are not my healer. God is my healer. Doctors are helps. You do sometimes need some medicine. Yeah, they prescribe medication and treatment. And we see that, you know, when we've been studying these healings, that a lot of people, um, God told them, you know, to take some medicine. We saw that with some kings in the Old Testament. Hezekiah was one. He had to put something on his, whatever, balls or sores. Yeah, he sores he had. Um, you know, and different other places that we saw in the Bible that medicine does go along with healing. Yeah, it does. So if you think about throwing away your medicine, don't do that. <laughs> you know? So we see here it was a great multitude. That means there was thousands of people, right? He healed thousands of people. And we see here that uh, they were lame, crippled, blind, mute, and many others. Just everything. Right. And they, uh, it says they put him down at his feet and he healed them. He healed them all. Right, he did. Praise God. Oh, they were there. He healed them all. Now, keep your finger here in Mark, the seventh chapter. We're going through verses 31 to the end of the chapter, verses 31 to 37. This is about the deaf mute. And we're going... Now, where are we going to start reading this here? We're going back to verse 32 in the seventh chapter. It says, they brought him... They brought him a man who was deaf and had difficult speaking, and they begged Jesus to put his hands on him. Put his hands on him. Mm -hmm. So when you lay hands on a person, you're just copying what Jesus done. That's what Jesus done to a lot That's of people. He put his hands on people. Yeah. He laid hands on the sick and they, you know, they will recover. Right. Now, this man had difficult speaking. Mm -hmm. He was deaf and had difficult speaking. Now, I know I'm going to, you know, plow the field crossways here. How you doing? Uh, a lot of people say, well, they were born like that. And it must have been God's will that they were born, you know, deaf and mute and with these different uh, deformities that, you know, some people are born with. But that's not God's will. That is the result of sin. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. Because God has already fixed Anybody who is born deaf or mute or retarded or whatever, God has made a way for it to be fixed in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ 
It's the fix all. Yeah, he is so. For any kind of deformity or anything. We just read that he healed lame people, right. blind people, everything else, right? Mm -hmm. right? He hasn't changed. He can still do the same thing today. And a lot of people, you know, even, you know, when they get healed of a sickness, they still want to hold on to that sickness because they have benefits that go along with when they say, well, I'm sick. People have pity on them. Well, like the man he told to get up and walk, he said, do you want to be healed? And get well, up. he was saying that he didn't have nobody to put him into right, the water. Right. He yeah, wanted somebody you know, to wait on him. He wanted somebody to wait on him. Now, I, you know, a lot of people say, well, they, you know, this had to be God's will for him to be born like that. No, what happened, sin entered the world through Adam. Right. And this is the offspring of sin. All this sickness is the offspring of sin. And you see this all through the Bible that um, Satan is an, an oppressor, oppression. He oppresses you. He uses demonic oppression. You see that in Acts. Jesus went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And you know, a lot of people say, well, they're going to have this for years and years and years, so how can they be healed? Well, we just read about a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years in one of our healing classes. And she got healed. Right. Matter of fact, she took a healing. Right. And then step back into the crowd, right? Like a cat, you know. And when they asked who Jesus asked who touched me, they all denied. She denied it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So she denied it. Now there, you know, there's a mir A healing is a miracle. Now look at me, with, if you would please, to the ninth chapter of Matthew. This is a reference verse that goes along with this verse. Brought this deaf mute to him. Uh, the ninth chapter, verses 32 and 33. Is there already? Yeah. 32, 33. Mm -hmm. You want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Well, they were going away. A mute, demon-possessed man was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out by Jesus, the mute man spoke. And the crowd wondered in amazement, saying, never before has anything like this miracle been seen in Israel. Now, this mute man was demon-possessed. Right. That's why I say sickness is satanic, demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the devil. Right. That came from all the way back from Adam, from sin entering in the world. Mm -hmm. When Adam and Eve sinned, sin came into the world and sin was passed on to all men. Jesus came so that we might have life yes, and right. might have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to fix all that. That's, that's why God sent Jesus to fix all this sickness, all this demonic oppression, and plus so that you could have eternal life. And what he did, he became sin for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God. Amen? Amen. He made us righteous. He took all our sins upon himself. Right, he made us righteous. And that's what a lot of people, you know, they want to think, well, I'm not worthy to be healed. You know, I'm dead so much stuff. They have condemnation and all that. But no, Jesus made you righteous so that you, you will be able to receive your healing. Mm -hmm. Now, read on down there to verse um, 34 to 38. But the Pharisees were saying... He casts out demons by the power of the ruler of demons. Now, even the Pharisees, the religious leaders, knew that demons have something to do with it, right? Right. Go ahead. Jesus went 
throughout all the cities and villages in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news, gospel of the kingdom, and the healing, every kind of disease and every kind of sickness, his words and his works reflecting his uh, masonship. Uh, mm -hmm. When he saw the crowds, he messiahship, I'm sorry. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion and pity for them because they were dispirited, distressed, like a sheep without a lamb. I mean, without a shepherd. <laughs> they was little lambs, but sheep. Sheep without a shepherd. Shepherd, right. So, you know, they was just... Yeah, scattered. Yeah. Then he said to his uh, disciples, the harvest indeed plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. So Jesus is still looking for people right, <clears throat> to get the word to uh, get this good news out that he can heal anything that's wrong with anybody at any time. And I know people don't like to hear that and they don't like to believe that because a lot of uh, denominations don't believe in healing. They don't preach on healing. They don't teach on healing. They also don't teach on uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. They also don't teach and preach on prosperity. These are all gifts it's, from it's, God. It's kind of sad, though, because it makes me feel they haven't received the Holy Spirit. or well, they have no knowledge of what the well, Holy Spirit even you, does. As we've been looking at these uh, different uh, passages, Jesus went around teaching. See, what we're talking about here tonight, tonight we're uh, crossing at least 50 to 60 years of unbelief. Because everybody don't believe like us. Most people believe that it's God's will for them to be sick. And to be poor. And, and to be poor. Else. And not to speak in tongues. It's just the teaching they have. You know, um, this is why we're so steady uh, on teaching on healing and being led by the Spirit and prosperity because the more you hear about it, the more you're like to believe it and what we do we give you scriptures this is just not something that we came up with we give you all the scriptures for it right right and, thing, and anything you right. believe in you should have scriptures for it if you believe that it's not god's will for you to be healed well where's the scripture right where is now it? i'm human i'm a man i can make mistakes now if i'm making mistakes about everything that i've been talking about you know, show me in the scriptures where I'm wrong. I don't want no man's opinion. I don't want no PhD's opinion. No theologian's, you know, opinion. I want to see, show me in the scriptures. It's all true. I know it is. And the thing of it is what people have to understand, but it's true for those who love God. Okay, let's go to this next See, verse. See, a lot of people don't, they do not love God. They can't stand God because they don't want to change their way of living. They'd rather li live that same old raggedy life. And some of them are in church. They do not want to change. They like to have special seats and be built up. But in, in the kingdom where I'm in, God's kingdom, we all the same. No one's greater than another. And so uh, you can't come in his kingdom like that. In, in God's kingdom, you do what he tells you to do. It's no majority vote, uh, which so many nays and so many yays. It's whatever God Almighty says. That's, that's the king over the kings. Amen, God. 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 And he said, don't put no one before me, no, not nothing, pride. not no one, not no thing, not no... Well, matter of fact, nothing. since you're saying this, a lot of people may not know and that. And so some of them don't want to go that way. This is in the Bible. We, I didn't go over it today because we, we have a, a prayer class that we started mm -hmm. during the day. And, you know, as time goes on, we're going to have a healing and class see. in the afternoon. Right. People want to feel that they're but, special. 
If you look you at know. Duke and Romney, the sixth chapter, and they not. This we is, all got uh, something to do. This is Moses uh, kind of summarizing the Ten Commandments here. Uh, Duke Romney, the sixth chapter. Okay, yeah, that's one of my favorite chapters. Pages all stuck together here. Yeah. Chapter. See, I'm going to get my other notes. Let me just. This, this, this is in the 10th chapter, I think. No, right? no, no. It ain't that Which far one did away. you want? Uh, the 5th chapter. Starting around uh, the 6th verse. It says, I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You're not in bondage anymore. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've been brought out of the world. Thou shalt have no other God before me. But you was right for the sixth chapter. It's, this is the fifth chapter I'm in. I'm reading the fifth chapter. Okay. I'm reading the fifth chapter, the seventh verse. Amen. But I'm reading out of King James. But it says the same thing in Amplified. You shall have no other God before me. Mm -hmm. Thou shall make thee any graving images or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water beneath the earth. So God saying that He's the only God. You don't have no other gods before him. Now going back to the seventh chapter, because whatever we do over here, I'm not taking none of the credit for it. It's, it's God gets all the glory. Amen. Somebody walked through that door right now, and we pulled out the healing oil, and they were ready to receive healing. We talked to them, asked them, do they believe that God can heal them? And they say yes, and we pull out the healing on and anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith. We just don't pray, Lord, heal this person if it be thy will. That's not a prayer of faith. Because we know it's his will for people to be healed. You know, <laughs> faith <laughs> and the will of God starts where, the, you know, where um, you got to know that it is God's will for you to be healed. And that's where your faith starts, where you know the will of God. Well, see, some people don't know that, and that's why some of them don't get healed. Amen. That's where a lot of them don't get healed. This is why we've been talking this and talking this for, since we've been, you know, started this ministry, we've been talking about healing. Now, in verse uh, 33, in the seventh chapter of Mark, it says, Jesus taking him aside by himself, away from the crowd. Now in the King James it says, and he took him aside from the multitude. Now why did Jesus do that? Why did he take him to the side from the multitude? Aside now he did this once before. He did this with uh, Jairus daughter. He had to do it. He, he, well, matter of fact, go back to the fifth chapter of Mark. I'm going to let them answer it. I'm not saying it. Um, and you see in the 40th verse. That he put them all out of the house. Mm -hmm, he did. It says, but when he had put them all out. Right. A lot of times, children, when you want to get healed, you got to get away from your, your people. 
you got to get away from unbelief. Right. If you're in an atmosphere where unbelief is, people don't believe in healing, and you're trying to get healing, the unbelief will cause you not to get healed. Right. And, you know, even if we talk to people and we tell them it is God's will for them to get healed and they get, you know, get a little joy in their life and start, you know, blooming like a flower. And then a lot of times what will happen when they go home and get with their own people, their own people will ask them, well, how do you feel? But not only, not only that. Don't, I don't want to hear about that faith stuff. Right. How do you feel? How do you really feel? <laughs> and, and can I tell you something? He, he had to pull them aside too, cause look how he healed them. He had to spit. That ain't in had nothing hand. to do with it. I'm just saying, people would have been talking about. We got that. we got something to say yeah. about that too. I'm but just, you just said what you think it was. No, I, I just told you I knew it wasn't that. It's because of unbelief of the crowd. You know, putting their two cents in and all that unbelief. Now a lot of people say, well, now you know, the commentary I'm, I'm, says that. That was, uh, this was clearly a symbolic action, that it, it really didn't happen. Because I'm just saying for people to see that. he that, put his fingers in his ears and spit saliva. And then put it in his and mouth. And touch the man's his mouth. tongue with his finger. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's unsanitary. That's what I'm saying, why he pulled him aside if he did do that. Because the Jewish people, the way they were, they would have just been appalled about the whole thing. They were already uh, fussing at every look for them not washing their hands at different times and uh, the, the Sabbath and all these well, other things. Well, there's a lot involved in that. So it was, a, it was a lot for somebody to do. Put their, even putting your finger in somebody's ear, that's nasty, you know. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And, and then to, to uh, spit and then put your finger in somebody's mouth with that's a lie. But even in today's world, that would just be out of this world, you know, with HIV and everything else going around. Some of them may have been ready to stone him. I'm just being honest. So he had to pull him aside because that would have interrupted See, so much. This is, this is yeah, what, so he pulled him aside. This is what happens. Well, a lot of people can't get healed. Now, whoever God is using to minister healing to them, mm -hmm. they'll say, um, no, you can't do that to me. Right, they spit and then put all on some other you can't, like you, you, can't, you can't lay your hands on me. You ain't touching I don't know me. where your hands have been. Right. You can't put that oil on me. Mm -hmm. It might make me break out or anything. But this is one thing for sure. The man couldn't say nothing. Well, he couldn't say nothing, but he could see. <laughs> but I'm saying... <laughs> it says that he couldn't hear. Right, and he couldn't talk. And he straight. couldn't talk straight. Mm -mm. But all the rest of his body functions was working. He could see if he didn't want it to happen, he could, you know, move back or whatever, right? He wanted to, he wanted to be healed. So he didn't... His friends him brought him to Jesus right. for Jesus to lay hands on him. Mm -hmm. So they had faith right. that if Jesus laid his hands on this deaf mute, right. he was going to be healed. Right, and he was healed. And Jesus took him to the side. And see, that's what happens a lot of times when, uh, you know, I remember I was, they wanted me to pray for somebody in this one church, I think the last church we were in. And I was saying to myself, there's so much unbelief in here, because they didn't believe in healing. And I, I couldn't really understand, well, why you want me to pray for him when y'all don't even believe in healing? Because it probably was just a customary thing that they did. You know, some, a ritual, ritualistic. A lot of people go to churches, uh, just a ritual. They go there on Sunday, they, they're in prayer service, Bible study, but they really don't have faith in what they what they going there for. It's, a, it's like a, a, a social well, here's the key. A social thing. Yeah. Here's the key. What I'm trying to get to. Right. It does. It if does. you really want to get healed by the Lord, a lot of times you have to get away from your family and, they feel and all that unbelief, mm -hmm. and be with people that believe in healing, right? Believe in laying hands on people, and they, you know, will be healed. 
But if you're with people that don't believe that, mm -hmm. all that unbelief will stop that. I mean, just just think, uh, uh, here, just go back a chapter to the sixth chapter of Mark. It says here in the sixth chapter of Mark, the first verse, and he went down from hence and came into his own country, and his mm -hmm. disciples followed him. Right. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence did this man get these stains? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, mm -hmm. the son of Mary, the the brother of James and mm -hmm. Joseph and mm -hmm. Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended. See, that's what I mean. At him. Offended. People get offended. And he was just teaching. Can you imagine if he would have done Right. Did? And it um, says here, and Jesus said unto oh, him, A prophet is not without honor, yeah. not in his own country and among his own kind, and in his own house. And he could not okay. dare. Do no mighty works. Right. Say that he laid his hands on a King. few sick folks mm -hmm. and healed them. Mm -hmm. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Right. Unbelief will stop you from getting healed. That's right. If I mean, even if, if you know, you can know for yourself that it's God's will for you to be healed. Mm -hmm. And you can coast, go to, uh, a different church and you can come here or go somewhere else and somebody can lay hands on you and you receive your healing. Right. And then the minute you get home, they say, well, what happened? And you know, you tell them, well, I, I have the hands laid on me and I believe I'm healed. And then they'll ask you, well, how do you really feel? Because they don't believe it. They I don't want to hear you, about that faith. They don't want how you to do believe you it really either. feel? And you I mean, you look like you, 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 the same way. I mean, you look so bad. I, I just, you know, I'm about ready to break down in tears. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people, unbelief. Right. So anyway, Jesus took this man to the side. I think he took him one. Um, one translation said he took him all the way out of town. They said away, away all the way the out crowd. of town, away from the crowd. Right. And then he put his hands in his he couldn't do that around him. Put saliva on his finger and touched his tongue. Right. Because I'm telling you, they've been ready to stone him. And he also, what happened here in the 34th verse, it said he looked, looked up, up to, to heaven. heaven. Right. Now you see that all through the Bible. Right. Um, you'll see that in 640, Mark 641. When he looked, when he when he was feeding the five thousand people with two fish and five loaves of bread, he looked up to heaven right. and prayed and prayed. So he looked up to heaven here, right? He prayed to his father. Yes, right. And, and he he and the earth and he sighed mm -hmm. deeply and mm -hmm. said to the man, "Ephrata, which is Aramaic, mean be open and release." Now, he's, look at Mark 8, 12, just the next verse over. What does that say? He groaned, he sighed deeply in his spirit, and said, why does this generation demand a sign? I assure you and most solemnly say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Because there were some foolish people asking him for a sign to hear you. Well, did the, all the these next other the verse on top of that it said the, the Pharisees came out and began to argue, argue mm -hmm. continuously and debate with him, demanding from him a sign from heaven to test him because of their unbelief. And he didn't did all those miracles and made the lame walk. The dumb. So after he had done this, Looked up to heaven, prayed to the Father. Mm -hmm. It says in verse 35, and his ears were open, right. his tongue was released, and be, he began to speak, speak plainly. plainly. Mm -hmm. Did this really happen? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's in the Bible. Could it happen today? Yeah, it can happen today. Amen. Now, I have a whole lot of other verses, but you know, I have to be led by the Spirit. Right. And I don't want to hold y'all too long here. And you know, after he did all that, he had to get on a boat and go to the other side because they didn't drain them. But I'm going to give you a few verses here. In Psalm uh, 33, Psalm 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. Jesus spoke a word there. You know that? That's Psalm 33, verse 6. And then Psalm 33, verse 9 says, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. I don't say that in my Psalm 33? Oh, I'm in Job, that's why. Because I'll be in Job. I've been in there so much. I'm, instead of me going to 33, I'm, I'm going to give you another to, verse here. Can I went you to a, Job. A it's love. right next door to me. There's a whole lot more to this. 33, 6. Holy Lord, oh Lord. 33, 6 and okay. verse 9. Then uh, Colossians. Verse 9 in the same chapter. Yeah. Same chapter. Okay. okay. I like that. I like that. But what we're going to do, we're going to stop right there. But what I picked up out of this story that, that the Lord revealed unto me. Mm-hmm. That what we're doing, we have to keep on doing regardless who don't believe it. Yeah, we do. We do have to keep doing it. We, we don't care who Stay don't believe it that it is yeah. not God's will to heal people. I believe that it is God's will to too. heal people I because I have scriptures for it. Right. If you don't believe it's God's will to heal people, give me the scriptures for it. Like I said, I don't want to hear your opinion. I want the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Because I can give you another scripture here of Colossians, the first chapter. Well, we haven't said nothing against uh, anything you're saying. No, I can tell in my spirit that that people need to know that you got to be bold on what you believe because they will challenge you. Well, they're going to do that anyway. I mean, they did with Jesus. And right, they right challenged there doing them. everything. They're going to challenge you. Uh, of Colossians, the first chapter. That's an expectation from them. Verses 16 to 17, it says, For by him all things were created in heaven and right. on earth, things visible and invisible, yes. whether right. thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Mm -hmm. All things were created and exist through him, yeah. that is, by his activity. activity and for him. Praise God. And he himself exists and is before <coughs> all things. Right. And in him all things hold together. Amen. His is the controlling cohesive force of the universe. That's what's keeping it together. This is what's keeping this whole universe. Right. A lot of people say, well, we're tearing, well, a lot of people, they are tearing up the world. Right. By different things they do. Right. But he's holding this thing together here. He is. And God has made a way for you, as long as you live on this earth, to be healed of any ailment that is is ailing you. Amen? Well, he said any kind of illness. Any uh, kind of illness. In, uh, uh, the beginning, you know, in the Old Testament. Right. Well, see, we have scriptures. Right, and you can get any kind of illness so, that hasn't been in, in the, uh, even named if you want to be healthy. So we know that God. he healed this deaf mute. Right. And this man could hear and he spoke plainly. That's just like he can heal any of us of any type of sickness. I mean, even if you ended up injuring yourself. Right. But the, the other thing about this is, yeah, we can have the healing, but it's a choice between curses and, 
healing. You can also receive all kind of illness and diseases if you reject God. Well, it's evident that most of the world is rejecting they're God. They're rejecting God. That's because why Because this is why uh, the plague is on the earth. And, and, and reject, this coronavirus yeah. ain't all over the earth for no reason no. at all. Whether it's man-made or whatever, it's part of a curse. From being disobedient. And because uh, some people probably thought they had an antidote for it, and it might right. end up killing them too. Right. Or making them sick. The only true fix-all for any kind of sickness or disease is Jesus Christ. Amen. Because once you come to Jesus, you will never die. Yeah, this body may perish, right. but you will never, you die. never die. Well, a lot of people say, well, when you die, that's the end of it anyway. No, no it's not. It's not. Mm -mm. When you die, you either go up or down. And a lot of people, if you've ever been knocked out or uh, under any kind of anesthesia, you don't remember that, right, until you wake back up. No, you don't. But when you die, you do remember. You will actually see your spirit leaving your body. And which way it's going to go, either up or down, is going to be on what decisions that you made here on earth. And whatever you've done. And I know this to be true. Whatever good you've done will be with and, you. And many other people who have had an outer body experience knows for it to be true too. Because I've been in both situations. I've been under anesthesia, I've been knocked out, and I couldn't remember nothing. But when my spirit left my body, I knew that it had left. Amen. I was fully conscious mm. of everything that was going on. <laughs> and see, a lot of people don't realize, even if you commit suicide, that is not the end. No, you, right, you're still going to be just... You're still going to be existing. Your, you your, your, your soul and spirit is still going to be existing. Yeah, wish they never killed her. Right. Well, they going to be saying, I didn't even kill myself. Right. <laughs> and because they will look down and see their body laying there, but this body is just a temple that God has given us to live in while we're here on earth. The spirit will still be living. But once Jesus had his glorified body, he went up into the atmosphere. He didn't need no spaceship or nothing. No. Don't Amen. Praise God. We'll catch you next see week. You, see you Thursday. Hope that helped you.